Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I'm able to consistently dominate and carry games with Echo in low elo. I peaked master last season playing mostly Echo jungle and at some point I was rank 5, maybe rank 7, I only have a screenshot of rank 7 on Echo on EO West, so while I might not be the best League of Legends player, I can still teach you a lot about Echo. Just to preface this, of course this is not going to be a step-by-step -step guide how you can win every game, since every game is going to be different, but I will show you some things that can make your gameplay much more consistent, and also I will show you the limits of Echo, because I think in the gameplay I'm going to show you, I pushed Echo to the limit very well, and it's something very important to win a lot of games and to be able to carry them. Probably the biggest difference between good echoes and bad ones is the knowledge of knowing how much you can get away with and using that knowledge to really snowball your leads as much as possible. Because echo is a champ that has insane power spikes with items so gold income is the most important thing for him. If you're playing echo you're a carry. That means you should look to take kills for yourself. The lower the elo the more important this becomes because you can't trust your teammates to carry. If you feel like this is too much pressure for you, then maybe Echo just isn't the right champ for you and you should look to play more supportive junglers like Jarvan or Zac that don't have a problem giving kills to their teammates. On Echo, if you get one kill before your first base, you're already in a very good spot and if you get two kills, the game is basically yours to lose because now you're in a great position to snowball and carry the game. Just as a quick announcement, I'm planning to do a more in-depth Echo Jungle Guide that covers much more things like matchups or situational item builds, etc. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Alright, so let's get into it. First of all, the rune page I run in 99% of my games is First Strike with Magical Footwear, Futures Market and Cosmic Insight. My secondaries are Transcendence and Gathering Storm. As I already said, Echo's power spikes mostly come from his items, so the extra gold generation you get from this rune setup has insane value for Echo. The damage from the rune is usually slightly lower than if you were to run the domination tree, but the damage and quality of life you gain from finishing your items faster is most definitely worth the trade-off. Magical footwear is basically the only rune that makes sense for a jungler in the inspiration tree, and the same goes for Cosmic Insight. Futures Market is also another rune why I value the Inspiration Tree so much in Echo since it allows you to hit your item spikes even faster. It also ensures that your first base won't be a total disaster and you should always be able to get a blasting one plus dark seal by. Now when it comes to the secondary runes I guess you have much more freedom to choose what fits your playstyle. For example some people like to run Triumph and Legend Tenacity. But I personally prefer Transcendence plus Gathering Storm, since it scales the best in my opinion. The reason I take Transcendence over Absolute Focus is simply because I believe 10 Ability Haze plus the passive of Transcendence are worth much more than 30 AP at level 18 when you're above 70% HP. Also you should always take the attack speed over the Adaptive Force since it has much more value in the jungle. Okay, so let's get into the gameplay. Just as a quick note, don't be confused about the minimap. I had to record it from the replay since I had it covered during the live stream, so you will sometimes see the enemy screens. So let's start off by talking about the clear. This is what will make your gameplay the most consistent and what a lot of especially low elo junglers do wrong. The camps are always going to respawn after 2 minutes 50 no matter what and clearing 3 camps in the mid game equals roughly the same amount of gold as a kill and even more XP. So on a gold hungry jungler like Echo, you should always look to have very efficient clear. If you're new to Echo, you should pay attention to how I clear the camps, because I know especially low elo players sometimes struggle with that. I didn't clear the crux perfectly in this game, because I missed the medium crux with the return of my Q, but that is a small detail and not impactful in the game. The only real note I have for the first clear of crux is to not use the Q to clear the small crux at the end, since the Q cooldown is too long and you will have to wait to be able to use it again at Raptors. This might be a controversial opinion since there are a lot of factors at play, but I start almost all of my games topside simply because I have the possibility of getting two kills on bot lane instead of one on top lane. Also in the current meta, the bot lane usually has much more impact in winning the game than the top lane, so getting them ahead has more value in my opinion. After clearing your top side, you usually have two options, either you continue clearing to your bot side or you look for a bot gank. In this game, you can see the bot lane has fought a lot, so their HP bars are low enough that I feel we can get kills there, so I go straight to bot lane. 
Since this was a low elo game, my bot lane didn't really react properly. The reaction should have been to push the wave under Terra much faster, but as you will see, it still worked out in the end. Also in this clip you will notice that I throw my Q while in forward. This is a basic echo mechanic that you should always use since it allows you to proc your passive much faster. Since Nautilus is a low elo player, you can see that he is scared to go for this dive, but even if he would have died, it would have been worth it to trade a kill from me for a kill on Janna. And since it took him so long, he almost dies to Draven in the end. In general, scenarios in which I would take this route are usually if the bot lane is currently trying to push a wave under tower, so they are overextended, or like in this scenario, where they are low HP, so diving is a possibility. Deciding which route you take also has a lot to do with the bot lane matchup, but since I have a Nautilus, the gang setup is great, so I'm convinced we can get some kills on the dive. A general rule for jungling is to always start clearing your camps from the outside, so either starting at Gromp or Crux. This way you ensure that you don't waste time when you're trying to path towards the lane. After clearing my bot set, I will take a reset, because I know my top set is starting to come up again, and I want to have my items so I can clear them faster. The idea realistic first base buy for Echo is a blasting one plus Dark Seal. In this game I got a kill so I don't even have to go in debt and I can also get a control ward. But if you're just able to full clear you will have to go in debt. This, which is something you should always do since you will easily make the 50 gold back from the extra, extra clear speed and kill potential you have with those items. Don't get baited by Hextech Alternator since it gives you worse stats for more gold and the passive doesn't really help you with clearing the jungle at all and the damage you get from it on champions is basically the same as you get from the extra AP from Blasting Wand. Also, if you go Hextag Alternator, you won't be able to get a Dark Seal. Right now you can see that the GP is massively overextending and even if the Tribrush would be warded, he would have no way of escaping. These kind of situations will happen all the time. The lower the elo, the more frequent these kind of mistakes from your enemies will be happening so it's important to recognize them. In general, as a jungler, you should always be looking at your lanes while clearing camps. Optimally, you would be looking at every lane and try to absorb as much information as possible, but personally, my brain can only handle looking at the lanes that I'm actually able to gank, so in this case, I'm not really looking bot lane, since I can't gank them anyways, and that's fine, because top lane is the lane that really matters to me in this moment. You should also have noticed that I helped my Shen push in the wave, which is really important since this allows him to take a good reset. And in this situation it's even better than it would often be since the GP is not even running TP. This is probably one of Echo's most niche strengths since his ability to push waves even in the early game is basically unmatched from any jungler and this can help your laners out a lot. Just make sure to not take all the farm because that will definitely tilt your laners most of the time. A good way to make sure you're staying ahead of your opposing jungler is to focus on getting as many crabs as possible. In higher elos, this is usually highly dependent on your laner's matchup since the lane with priority will usually look to help and secure the crab. But in low elo, you basically get gifted every crab for free if you're just there right as it spawns. When clearing the jungle, make sure to clear the buffs after your normal camps in situations like these since it will allow you to have impact on the map for a longer time while being buffed. Since I see on the minimap that the enemy team has control of my bot side jungle and I'm not able to get there fast enough, I decide to regang top and look for a kill there. Because GP has flash available, we're not able to get the kill, and since bot lane has been dove, Shen decides to ult the Nautilus. But GP not being full HP means I'm able to pressure him and eventually even kill him because he doesn't respect my range. These are the kind of limits you need to be aware of and take advantage of if you want to be able to consistently carry games. The amount of minions GP loses as well as the huge amounts of XP I get from the solo kill definitely make this kill work, even though I had to use my flash and ult in the end. I make sure to clear my crack camp that has respawned before looking for a reset. It is important to take a reset here instead of passing bot side for multiple reasons. First of all, Diana could have easily cleared my bot side while I was showing top for such a long time, and it is much easier for me to help my bot lane after spending the gold I currently have on me. Alright, so clearing wolves here was actually a mistake, I should have went straight to the crab since it could have been contested and if Diana is looking to clear it, 
I would have been too late. Here I make another big mistake since I keep cleaning the ward instead of helping my bot lane right away. For some reason I thought their bot would just be able to disengage after seeing me so early, but since we have a Nautilus it's very difficult for them to get away. But as you can see, even though I completely griefed my team in this situation, I'm still able to get away with two kills. This just goes to show how many mistakes people in this elo really make that you can take advantage of, and you don't even have to play perfect for it. As you can see here, since none of my jungle is up, I decided to follow my team top lane to create a numbers advantage. Another good option would have been to just take a reset and finally hit that big rocket boat power spike. But since I'm so far ahead in items, I already feel like I can push my advantages even further and stay on the map for longer. Obviously Diana should have never been caught here, but since the vision and communication in low elo games is usually extremely bad, she had no idea that 4 people were around her. So this is another thing you really need to take advantage of in low elo games. In a higher elo game I would have taken the recall after Crux basically every time, but since I G see GP is overextending yet again, I decide to just take the free kill. Somehow my Shen managed to execute, so I'm yet again pushing in the wave to make sure GP loses the incoming wave. Also the extra gold I gain is definitely appreciated. I don't quite finish pushing it in since Tristana is on her way top and she's very fat, but it's enough that the wave crashes. Now from my perspective this game is looking really good, but if you take a look at the gold graph you can see that my team is behind in gold by a substantial amount. And since Xayah and Ari are basically out of the game, this game is on my shoulders to carry. These kind of situations will happen frequently and you will have to learn how to deal with them. Most important in these situations is to really stop taking stupid risks since your death could mean that the game is lost. This statement becomes even more true the higher the elo goes. At the same time, you can't get complacent because you still have to make sure to somehow turn the game in your favor. In this fight on bot lane, my team either doesn't realize how strong I am at that point or they just didn't realize I was there, so I almost die. This is one of the things you really have to be aware of in low elo since you can't rely on your teammates to actually participate in the game. In these kind of game states your goal should be to start looking for shutdowns. This way you will ac accelerate your snowballing even faster and turn the game. The reason the protobelt power spike is so huge in echo is the extra range for engage the item unlocks for him. As well as making the combo to proc the passive auto attack significantly faster. I sometimes see people arguing about going Nashus first on Echo Jungle because it helps you clear the jungle faster, but this is simply a wrong opinion because the clear speed increase is negligent and the loss of range is really holding you back. In the upcoming fight you can see how much faster the protobelt makes the whole combo. If Diana had faster reflexes she might have been able to flash away to avoid my third auto attack if I don't have protobelt, but in this case even if she would have flashed earlier the extra move speed from protobelt would have helped me catch up to her. Also the protobelt often helps you to get behind enemies so they take the return damage of your Q. Once again I'm looking to get the crab, sadly Tristana is contesting it this time and since she's just as strong as me and my protobelt is on cooldown, I decide not to take the risk and go all in after my W has expired. This is a great time to buy Magi since I have 10 stacks and I need to start to really take the game into my hands. Also I wasn't able to afford the Nashos and the recurve bow and Amton buy would have had much less value than the Magis. In general, you're looking to build Magis most games on Echo, since you're basically choosing when you're gonna die on him. As you can see, I tell my team that I will have the game under control if I get the shutdown on Tristana. Thankfully, Tristana heard my prayers and decided to get cocky and invade our jungle alone, so I'm able to get exactly what I wanted. As you can see I made extra sure to get the kill and not give it to Nautilus since the gold has so much more value on me. In these situations you really should make sure to just push your own advantages even further instead of trying to enable your team. While that might sometimes be a good option in higher elo games, in low elo games it most certainly is not. Also as a side note, first strike gave me an extra 116 gold which is just insane at 50 minutes since it's basically a third of a kill just for free. Our brother GP is overextending yet again and since I have Magis it would be worth to go for him even if he was just worth 100 gold, 
but somehow he was even worth a shutdown, so this was obviously a massive mistake by him. But I can't stress this enough, these kind of mistakes will happen incredibly frequently in low elo games. You just have to be aware of them and punish them. As you might have noticed, all my resets in this game have felt really good since I've always been able to buy items that have given me big power spike. This is obviously also because I got a lot of kills, but the foundation to being able to have these good and satisfying resets is still clear efficiently. After this reset is where Echo will really start to feel extremely unfair to play against, so you as the Echo player have to be aware of that and completely abuse it. Don't give your enemies any space. If your screen is locked onto you and they are on your screen, they are basically in kill range. This 2 item power spike is usually where you can start to take a lot of duels in an even game, and if you're ahead like in this game, you can just start to completely dominate your enemies. Also, when you're ahead, don't forget to take objectives, especially the mid-tier 1 turret, since this will open up the map a lot and give your enemies even less space in which they can move safely. Echo is a very potent tower pusher with Nashers, so don't be afraid to take them really quick in situations where they are uncontested. The dragon isn't a huge win condition in this game since we weren't able to contest them earlier due to our bot lane losing, so I'm not in a big hurry to get there. Your next objective, after having turned the game in your favor, is to make sure it stays that way. The most important thing for you now is to get the Rabadon's power spike as fast as possible. If you get to Rabadon's in an even game state or even a game where you're behind, you're still a great threat in most games. So if you're ahead and are able to complete it at around the 20 minute mark, the game is basically unlosable. This engage angle is something I use oftentimes even in higher elos to great success, so it is definitely something you should be looking to implement in your gameplay. Now as you can see, after clearing my jungle, I will be at around 3.4k gold, which would usually be just shy of being able to buy Rabadons. Granted, in this case, I could have also just cleared the top wave, but in a lot of situations it might have already been pushed by your top laner. And now you're either going to base to buy two needlessly large rods and sit on a lot of unspent money, or you have to take a risk and stay on the map even longer, to get to the 3.6k. Both of these options are less than optimal. This is why Futures Markets has such a good value. You might not believe me, but these situations happen almost every game for one of your item power spikes. In this case I also had the control wood in my inventory that I was able to sell, so I decided to do that and not go into debt, but at this point in the game the minus 50 gold would have had no impact at all. You can see I show how much money First Strike has made me in this game. Obviously I'm extremely fat, so the 1.1k I achieved in 20 minutes are not really realistic in most circumstances, but it just goes to show how much more you can snowball with this rune. First Strike is a very volatile rune which doesn't have the most consistent results, but I would say on average if you know how to play with it, you'll have around 400 to 600 extra gold at the 20 minute mark, which is still 2 extra kills just for free. After completing Rabadons, basically all your kills will grant you around 150 or even more extra gold, which helps you complete your 5th and 6th item incredibly fast. If Xayah wasn't trolling on bot lane, we could have easily done Nash here without any risk since Echo is very fast at taking neutral objectives. After completing Rabadons, you will deal around 1.5k damage with your passive procs. This is also the reason I believe Echo is the best objective stealer in the game. Here I decided that my team will manage to 3v1 the GP, so I won't waste my time there. Also at this point I can slow down a little bit when it comes to my gold generation and leave more for my team since I already hit the big item spikes. In these kind of game states it is way more important to create pressure for the enemy by pushing in their waves and therefore opening up time windows to take objectives. Now I am basically just on the hunt since clearing my jungle is not the priority anymore and removing enemies from the map for a long time is a lot more valuable. As you can see, the amounts of damage I deal are just completely unfair and I think even my mom would be able to close out this game. With two enemies of the map we can feel comfortable taking the Nash. As you can see, on the first hit my passive only dealt 800 damage. This was because I had the Baron debuff because I was tanking it. So if you're playing a carry champ, always make sure someone else is tanking the Nash. At this point the game is just won and I drag it out for a little bit because I want to have some more fun with Lich Bane. Here are some examples of enemies thinking they're allowed to be on my screen.
now the enemy button is so demotivated that they just start running it and we make our way towards the nexus. You might be thinking this is just a one-off game and the things I showed you here are not things you can consistently do and your right hand extend, obviously you're not gonna be able to pop off like this in every single game, but if you look at my match history on these new accounts you can see that I'm able to basically always get fed. Not always this extremely fat, but still fat enough that I get into a position to carry if I play well enough. The games where I personally struggle the most are ones where I only get assists instead of kills, because it is much, much easier to start snowballing with early kills. You should notice that my CS numbers are always around 8 CS per minute, sometimes obviously less in losing games and sometimes more in hard winning games, but your average should be around 7.5 to 8 CS in a large sample size of games. I really hope you enjoyed this video and were able to learn something. If you did, consider subscribing and liking the video. As I already said in the beginning, I'm planning to make an even more in-depth general echo jungle guide that is gonna cover a lot more overall themes. Also, if you're looking to learn even more about echo and ask me questions live, consider following my Twitch at twitch.tv slash echolani. Thanks to everyone that actually made it to the end of the video. I really appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful day.